Welcome to Gallbladder Ultrasound. This is for the MS3 Surgery Clerkship. We're going to go over the basics of a focused bedside ultrasound of the gallbladder, as well as a few cases and examples. Now with any focused bedside ultrasound, we're looking to answer a few questions. In this case, we're trying to decide whether or not there's gallstones or sludge present, there's any gallbladder wall thickening, to look and see if there's any pericholocystic fluid, and then determine whether or not there's a sonographic Murphy sign. Now this is something that you can determine when you're doing the ultrasound. If when you're scanning over the gallbladder, the patient has relatively more tenderness than at other places where you're ultrasounding, and if they take a deep breath in and hold it, that's positive for a sonographic Murphy sign. Now looking a little bit more closely at this particular ultrasound image, we can see stones present. The wall is nice and thin. It's going to measure less than 3 millimeters. So anything greater than 3 millimeters is considered a thickened wall. You want to always measure the anterior wall. There's no pericholocystic fluid. And of course, by the image, I can't tell you whether or not there's a sonographic Murphy sign. Now whenever you're ultrasounding the gallbladder, this is going to seem funny, but you want to make sure you're actually looking at the gallbladder. There are a lot of things near the gallbladder that can look very similar. So you want to locate your median lobar fissure, and that's going to connect your gallbladder to your portal triad. And that's a clue that you are looking actually at the gallbladder instead of, say, the IVC, the aorta, or bowel. Here's another ultrasound image of a gallbladder. I think this is pretty cool. It kind of looks like a swan neck to me. And you can see a small stone there, kind of right in the neck of the gallbladder. Now this is where you're going to get symptomatic stones. So if a patient's having a lot of pain um, from gallstones, they're generally in the neck. You would then want the patient to roll onto their left side and see whether or not the stone rolled out of the neck of the gallbladder. But otherwise, this gallbladder looks okay. Wall looks fine, there's no fluid around it, and the common bile duct looks within normal limits as well. Here are a few images of normal gallbladders. As you can see, we see the median lobar fissure. This is connecting to the portal triad, so that again lets us know that we are definitely looking at the gallbladder. The walls look nice and thin, and again, you're going to measure the anterior wall. There's no evidence of sludge or stone, and there's no pericholocystic fluid. Now this is just a few examples of sludge within the gallbladder. The gallbladder on the right also has some thickened wall and pericholocystic fluid. So here's our case. We've got a 35-year-old female. She's presenting with vomiting. It started today. No really associated symptoms. She has no past medical or surgical history. Her vitals are just significant for a little bit of an elevated heart rate at 105. Blood pressure looks normal. She's afebrile. Physical exam, she had some epigastric and right upper quadrant tenderness to palpation, but there were no peritoneal signs. So your differential is pretty broad. It can include cholecystitis, cholelithiasis, gastric reflux, peptic ulcer disease, pancreatitis, kidney stones, pregnancy, it's pretty broad. So you decide you're going to take your ultrasound into the room with you when you went to see this patient. So you throw your ultrasound on, and this is what you see. So right away you have your diagnosis. In this ultrasound clip, you can see a few very important things. Here we have a whole bunch of stones lining the bottom of the gallbladder. And you can tell that they're stones by the shadowing that they're casting underneath. The wall is really thick. If you measured this, it would be greater than 3 millimeters. And surrounding the wall, you can see a little bit of pericholocystic fluid. This patient did have a sonographic Murphy sign on exam. So this patient, you know, before you even have uh, an IV in or labs done, you already know your diagnosis. You know that you'll need to call surgery and um, get her started on some antibiotics and get her some pain relief. So here's just a zoomed up better image so you can kind of see the findings a little bit more clearly. So like I said, there's stones, there's wall thickening, and again, there's pericholocystic fluid. 
So case two, same presentation, same vitals, same exam. And you think, I just saw this patient, so I'm going to take my ultrasound in, and maybe I'll get my diagnosis this time as well. So this is what you see on the ultrasound this time. Now here you can see a large stone in the neck of the gallbladder, but in this case, the wall looks nice and thin, less than three millimeters. There's no fluid surrounding the gallbladder. So in this case, you have simple cholelithiasis or biliary colic. You can roll the patient on the left and see if the stone rolls out. If her labs all look normal, you can get her pain under control, get her nausea vomiting under control. She could be discharged home and you could have her follow up with a general surgeon to see about having her gallbladder taken out. So this is the measurement of that gallbladder wall and as you can see it measured 2.4 millimeters, so less than 3 millimeters. So in summary, this is a quick, accurate, non-invasive, and easy way to narrow your differential for abdominal pain at the bedside. You're easily able to determine whether or not the patient has cholecystitis versus cholelithiasis versus another cause of their abdominal pain, which would require further workup. Thank you.